Right, so impulse equals force times time. Impulse is the amount of average of force applied to an object over a certain time, causing the object's momentum to change. Now, if it's the same object, it has the same mass, so you really are talking about the causing the velocity to change. Okay? Now, what's impulse measurement? What's impulse measurement? It's not how unit. Okay? Uh, you could be Newton seconds, but it, it, you don't really need the unit for impulse. If you were trying to work with a unit, it's probably Newton seconds. But then you'll notice the impulse itself isn't in your data book. There's not a thing that says impulse equals force times time. It's not in your data book. But impulse could be Newton seconds if you really had to. But you'll never be asked to work out the impulse of something. You'll be asked to work out the, 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 the force going by the time given and the change in momentum. <coughs> okay, so let me let me go through to the end of this and you'll see how you would be asked the question there. So let's just understand what the impulse is to start with and the differences between them. So if we be given a large force in small time, so we have um, large force uh, applied for a small time, that will end up equaling the large force applied over a small time to the same as a small force applied over a longer time. These will, these will give you the same change in velocity. Both these will give the same change in velocity. Both these will give the same change in velocity. Change in velocity is the same as change in momentum for us. We get the same change in momentum. Okay? Now, so large force applied over a small time, or small force applied over a longer time. You'll see the same change in velocity. So, why do we need to know this? What, what difference does it make? <coughs> well, in terms of collisions and explosions, we have a set change in momentum. We calculate our change in momentum. And we want to, we can calculate the force required to, that happened in that collision or that explosion. We can calculate the, the force that was there, given by how long the objects were in contact with each other. I'll let you finish that before we go on to the next one. So, in the next slide I'll show you the formula that's actually given and explain how we use that. Okay, now it's all a bit vague just now, I know. But let's just get down to how you would actually use this in a question. have your change of momentum, let's say it's a car hitting a wall. Okay? So let's take an example of a car hitting a wall. Car hitting a wall. Okay? So the first thing you've done is you've calculated your change of momentum. Going from your M1 V1 equals M2 V2 You've got all your velocities, you've got all your masses, all that kind of stuff. You've worked out what the change in momentum was. You've worked out what all their velocities were. So, you've calculated your change in momentum. You've got your MVs and MUs, whatever. You know the mass of the wall, you know the mass of the car, you know what velocity you had before, velocity you had afterwards, whatever. 
We should have a fairly comfortable knowing how to calculate the change in momentum what it had before, what it had afterwards, what's the difference, there's your change in momentum. What the momentum is conserved. Yeah. But for an object, it's always conserved in the whole system, but for the car, the car starts off going at a speed that finishes at zero. So for the car itself, its momentum changes. But that momentum is then passed on to the wall. So the wall then takes up the whole system. The, the wall starts off with zero, the car starts off with some, the car hits the wall, the wall then moves. So the wall has taken some momentum away from the car. The car itself has a change in momentum. <coughs> Understand? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at objects. Not that it's the whole system, we're looking at the objects. So a car hitting the wall. Calculate the change in momentum for the object. For one of the objects, one of the objects. In this case, in this case we're going to say the car. Okay? Now you'll do that in a question. You calculate the change of momentum for one of the objects. Now what it's maybe going to ask you now is, you're told that the car is in contact with the wall for so many seconds. And you're asked to work out the force experienced by the car. Now, if you're talking about the force experienced by the car, you're talking about the force experienced by the driver or the passengers on the seat belts. If we want to reduce the force experienced by the passengers and the drivers, reduce the damage caused to their body, we want to increase the time in which they're in contact with the seat belt. Uh -huh. We want to increase the time in which the, the, the car is in contact with the wall. If the car's in contact with the wall for a longer period of time, then car's in contact with the wall for a longer period of time, then the impulse is going to be the same, but the force will be smaller. The force experienced for the car will be smaller, the change of momentum will be the same. Okay? So let's try and explain that. Car hitting a wall. Calculate the change in momentum from one of the objects, for example the car. The change of momentum is going to be your NV minus NU. You've got that. So then the NU's, the second part would be the U's, your FP equals NV minus NU. To say that the NV minus your NU equals your impulse. And if you're given a T value, you can work out the force experience for the car. And if you're given T, you can calculate F. And F is going to be the force experienced by the car. So, you calculate change of momentum. You get told your change of momentum is the same as the impulse. You're given F T equals MV minus MU in your data book. You're given time of contact. The T is time of contact. And then you can calculate the force experienced by the car from that. Right? So, if we have a formula, F T equals MV minus MU, and we want to reduce the force experienced by the car, we must increase the time the car is in contact. Right, okay, so let's think about that again. So if we know <coughs> FT equals MV minus MU, this is constant. Constant for our example. Constant, um, not in every case, constant for our example. In other words, the things already happen. Okay? Constant for our example. Time, the force, we want to reduce the force. And that means we increase the time. The time. Contact. 